Hello and welcome to the Dustin Eric Podcast Show brought to you by Mimosa Networks. Hi, I'm Dustin. And I'm Eric. Today we're on episode number 19. We're going to talk about antenna co-location. Uh, we're going to give you advice on deploying with a million other antennas around, all which are transmitting on the same frequency as you, or is a super high-powered transmitter killing your signal? Holy run-on sentence Batman. Awesome. That was seamless. It was. Actually. Seamless. Today we have a, a couple of special guests one that you know very well, Jeff Jones from Amosa Support. Welcome back. Good to be here. Thanks. And then a brand new face, Lucia Sanchez, Director of Channel Sales of Cala, which is the Caribbean and Latin America. So welcome to the show. Thank you, guys. Since you're here today, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what you do here at Mimosa? So I'm going to, throughout the podcast, I'm going to be speaking in Spanish to have a different view to our, my customers. So I, yo soy la directora de ventas para Latinoamérica. Me encargo de toda la región. Mis clientes son, la mayoría son ISPs, um, basados en, desde México hasta el Caribe, um, incluyendo Brasil y Argentina. Um, y yo veo todo eso. Cualquier pregunta, duda o soporte que necesiten, yo sería la persona encargada de toda la región. Okay, okay Dustin, are you? All right. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea what you said, so uh, excellent. She probably you, said that we're... You pulled we're, a few countries out of there, didn't you? We're ugly and we're smelly, you know, the normal stuff they talk about us around here in the office. Siempre. <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs> All right, so today's main course, uh, antenna co-locations. So Jeff, Eric, and I, when we're on chats, we have a lot of people that come in the chat asking about antenna co-location they're having issues with interference or their their phi rates are low on one end of the link or they just can't get a stable uh, throughput across the link and they don't know why. Um, a lot of that has to do probably with, of course, the, the channel they're using, but also how close they are to other radios of the same frequency and other radios that are maybe not in the same frequency, but they're extremely high powered transmitters like FM or LTE or something along those lines. So today we want to talk about a little bit about how you should go about actually deploying your radios and what you should look at before you deploy them and what you should look at after you deploy them to try and troubleshoot what kind of issues you're having. So Jeff, do you want to jump in and uh, tell us a little bit about your advice on that? Yeah, so you can see in this map here, uh, <laughs> this is a uh, spectrum analyzer view of a very, very crowded network. And uh, it's not typically that crowded, but uh, especially in some of our countries overseas where the regulations are not as strict, you'll see conditions like this. And so one of the biggest challenges we see with co-location is uh, the radios get place too close to other radios. Now that's not inherent to Mimosa, that's just RF physics 101. Um, when you have two transmitting and receiving devices close to each other, uh, there's a really good chance that you're going to have um, co-location interference. So um, that's, that's a big piece of us trying to help customers is to get them to relocate their radios at least 10 feet away so that they won't co-locate, uh, interfere in the co-location matter. Eric, what do you think? Yeah, I think uh, so, so uh, the, the proximity between, uh, at horizontally, uh, horizontal separation and also vertical separation. So we try to get a couple right. of meters out horizontally uh, and uh, vertically. Um, especially if in a crowded spectrum, you're looking at five, six gig right there. Yeah. Um, so bonus points, Eric. Um, what is the recommended distance between two Mimosa radios on the same tower? Uh, two meters. Jeff? Jeff, what's the recommended I'm going to give you the answer? RF engineer answer. It's It depends. Exactly. <laughs> there you it, go. It really depends. There's a lot, of, a lot of unknown variables in Thanks, that statement. Dustin. So, of course, we have recommended distances, but we also understand that sometimes you just don't have right. room to get far away from a, a different radio. So what other options do we have to mitigate um, incoming noise from other radios? So uh, we have uh, GPS, GLONASS and GPS uh, reception. Uh, timing is super critical. In uh, TDMA, you want to you want to ensure uh, genders are, uh, say, similar, say two Bs uh, co-located with each other and two As on the far ends, et cetera. So what would you do with something that isn't Mimosa then? So something that isn't... Uh, when you're co-locating Mimosa with something that's not Mimosa? I would say look at uh, look at channel widths and, uh, and uh, spectrum. Uh, separation or uh, frequency separation 
uh, and then the physical uh, locations of those uh, devices. Jeff, how would we go about troubleshooting something like this? Well, I find the first thing to do is to get into the radios locally. So uh, we like using TeamViewer for getting into customer networks uh, uh, configuration. So first thing I want to look at is a spectrum analyst, analyzer because that really tells us the story of what's going on. Um, second thing is, um, you know, talk with the customer, whether on phone or in chat, and find out what the current conditions are. One of the biggest things that we see is that you'll have two radios on the same tower leg facing the same direction. So uh, antenna overlap can cause issues uh, as well as um, being in close proximity to each other. So these are some of the things that we want to look at uh, early on. So with, with, with that, with different uh, manufacturers, different dishes and different, uh, we look at front to side, front to rear uh, lobes and energy coming off the side of the uh, reflectors here, et cetera. So like, like you said, you, some uh, perform better than others. And then that'll, and then once you're looking at a spectrum that we can get into, say a, a customer's radio, uh, then we can, yeah, you can get in there and see if you can mitigate some of that uh, that uh, interference. So one thing I like to recommend for all of our customers is to have pictures of their installations. Yep. Because pictures, again, they tell uh, a thousand words or more in some cases. So if we can see what your deployment looks like, uh, if you're watching mm -hmm. from home, you can kind of see a picture here of a, a tower with a bunch of co-located antennas or this one here. If we can see that, if you can show us mm -hmm. which antenna is yours and which one you're having issues with, it goes a long way for us to know what's around your antenna, what's facing the same direction as your antenna, or what might be shooting into the back of it. And it'll help us give, a, uh, give you more direction on what you can do to fix your problem. To give you an example, we had a guy in uh, South America that I talked to in chat. He had a Mimosa B11, and he was parked directly below a high-powered FM transmitter and couldn't figure out why he wouldn't modulate up to the highest modulation rate. Um, I asked for screenshots of his deployment. I looked at them. I said, hey, move your radio 20 feet down the tower. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, that's great, because I didn't want to replace it. He came back to me the next day and said, it's amazing. That worked perfectly. Thank you very much. There had been no way for us to know for sure that was the issue without those photos. Um, and similarly, I had a, a guy who had some, st uh, some equipment closer to the ground, but he had a, a sector antenna. We were all both at five gig in a backhaul, and the sector was in front of the uh, separate point-to-point uh, -point backhaul. So there's energy coming this way, plus the sector uh, system was seeing the energy coming back from the point-to-point -point far end, right, coming back at a couple miles back in. So there's all kinds of little, neat, uh, little nuances uh, and so on. We tried to qualify uh, when the folks come in from chat and see what they've got. And those pictures are super hel helpful. Right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I know that we need to sum this up pretty quick so Lucia can translate. So what are just step-by-step -step recommendations on how to prevent this or how to troubleshoot and rectify this issue? I think initially go into the design tool and look at the topology, uh, look at look at what's going on um, and where you need to be operating and what what you have uh, currently designed and what do you think you're if you're going to build up or expand in the future at the same location you know what what are you adding um, what can live next to what uh, what devices and so on for, for co-location to kind of plan it uh, plan something out yeah i would uh, say so have clear clear information early on uh, some customers don't really understand what's actually on the tower so mm -hmm. knowing your tower location physically is very important I think having that information readily available when you come into chat, uh, as you mentioned, photos are, are worth their weight in gold because it gives us this clear indication of what's going on, as well as understanding your RF environment. If you're uh, co-located where there's a cell site or there's uh, other competing technologies, um, these are things that should be vetted out early on before the deployment. So uh, one of the things that we like to see customers do is to do a physical site survey prior to actually putting equipment equipment up on the tower. And then I think the final thing is, you know, not only physical uh, separation, but even frequency separation is important. Not everyone has RF environments that look like that picture there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, doing a frequency, frequency separated uh, um, between two radios is also equally important. 
And I would think that having a, a wideband spectrum analyzer would be helpful as well because yes. while, again, you might see uh, see or not see uh, interference in a 5 gig band, um, it could be a harmonics of a 5 gig band that mm -hmm. could be causing your issues or just a high power transmitter in general. So it'd be good to know exactly what frequencies you're dealing with on the tower and, That's right. and how strong their, their output power is. Yes, we've seen that with FM transmitters specifically. Uh, they'll actually wash out a GPS signal completely. So, you know, GPS is at 1575, and you have an FM transmitter that's way far away as far as on the spectrum. But it's just because of the RF hash that's in the air, it's going to cause uh, just enough interference to, that it won't uh, connect. Yeah, you cut cut that in half, the, the, uh, the uh, half of that, uh, the first harmonic of that, uh, you cut that 1575 in half, L1, L2 on GLONASS, and, and you're looking in the uh, eight 900 meg uh, range for, uh, what, cellular. for yeah. cellular yep. and stuff. Yeah. All right, so Lucia, it's your turn. So básicamente en resumen, lo que ellos recomiendan para su colocación de antena es que hagan sus estudios. Siempre revisen bien el, la torre, um, su, su, todo lo que tiene instalado para evitar las interferencias. Y claro, les recomiendan que hagan un estudio del sitio. Bien, de, si tienen conocimiento de REF, de un sistema de anil, anil, analizador de frecuencias, tener sus frecuencias separadas. Hay muchas recomendaciones y cosas que soporte técnico también lo puede ayudar a revisar. Si tiene alguna interferencia y muchos problemas, es importante tener fotografías de su instalación, tener el conocimiento de lo que tiene instalado alrededor y nuestro soporte técnico departamento le puede ayudar a revisar esos temas. Y es mucho más útil tener eso porque cuando ellos pueden ver lo que tienen, pueden ayudarles a resolver el tema si es solo una instalación. Um, y siempre les recomendamos que hagan su diseño antes de tiempo en nuestro sitio de web, que es algo que ofrecemos gratis para todos nuestros clientes. Pueden hacer ahí análisis, revisar el sitio y revisar bien la instalación. Y en eso también les podemos apoyar. Si, es, si no tienen mucho conocimiento y tienen las coordenadas de GPS, tenemos um, personal espe especializado en ese aspecto. Pero siempre tomen en cuenta que para eso estamos. Justin, uh, gracias. It. De nada. Adelante. Uh, thank you. Uh, I guess, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. Um, we really appreciate your contribution, Lucia, and I'm sure the, the folks in... Uh, the Caribbean and Latin America appreciate your translation on the show as well. Anytime. Uh, Jeff, thanks for coming back again. You're welcome. Thank and you. Eric, it's, it's always good to see you on Thank the show. You. Gosh. Um, All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time on the next episode. Thanks for tuning in. Please hit the subscribe or follow button to stay up to date with our latest podcast, which will be available on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud.